Hey, good afternoon everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Absolutely perfect solar day going off here today. About 84 degrees again. Beautiful. Before we jump into today's video, I gotta come out and run some things down the garbage disposal, kitchen waste. And there it is. A non-electric garbage disposal. Works well. And right here is where those uh, 500 watts of testing panels that I use in a lot of demonstrations were. And if you've been watching the uh, previous videos, you can see that tall tree behind me still putting shade in that area, which is why I have moved them. And as you can see, I had to cut a swath out of the jungle yesterday uh, to make room for these. These are still in a temporary uh, situation, although I did start catching sun on them this morning at about little after eight. They are in full sun right now, as opposed to that other place where they still wouldn't be. Uh, approaching noon now and they're doing great I'm gonna watch them in this position uh, for a little bit longer and, and let the Sun go down a little bit further and I may have to bump them out there a little bit uh, as I've mentioned before I always try to mount these in the permanent position where the Sun is at its lowest point in the year and that's not until December so let's go into the shop and We'll continue on the previous project we were talking about, and that's building your own standalone system and everything that's included. Boy, it's warm out here today. Whew. But we're cranking now, cranking. I just took a look on the Victron app. Everything is uh, overproducing right now. The first three panels, 300 watts going into one system. I saw 302 watts going in. The last two, 200 watts, saw 205 watts going into that system. So all systems looking great. So in the previous video, I laid out this entire solar system here. It was still all in the boxes. And I gave you just a little brief overview about how easy this is to do, even for beginners. And all of these components that will be used. So, the first thing I like to do when I'm getting ready to uh, build a new system is lay it out with everything involved so I get an idea about where I want everything. Now, when I get ready to permanently mount it on the wall, just underneath this table, uh, it may change a little bit, but I'll just go through. So, <clears throat> what we've got, I know that I'm going to be bringing in solar panel cables through a wall that's where this pass through will come in and then it will from the pass through go into the solar isolator and then from the isolator into the charge controller and then from the charge controller it's going to go on the negative battery side to the negative bus bar on the positive battery side it's going to go to a 50 amp breaker here from that breaker, I'll make a short little jump to the positive bus bar. And then off the inverter, got a couple of two aug cables going into a fuse. I'm going to drop a 200 amp fuse in there. And then this cable will come down, tie into this bus bar. And then this is on the battery side. Now these will connect to the battery. And then from the battery, positive, I'm gonna go up to a 100 amp breaker. On the negative, off the battery, I'm gonna come in and tie in to this uh, shunt battery monitor. And then from there, that will go in to the negative bus bar. Now when I do mount this 
on the wall, which I'm going to do in just a couple of minutes, I always work from the inverter backwards. I make hooking up the battery the very last thing I always do. Absolutely. So then I know I have no chance of working with an, an alive system. I can go back through, double check everything, make sure everything is exactly the way I want it before I ever tie it up to power. So I always start with the inverter, work my way backwards, and the whole thing will start to tie in together. And at the very last, we'll connect those battery cables, and this will be in a live system, which I expect to work very well. So, time to get this off the table. But that's, that's just what I like to do. I like to lay it out like this, get an idea where I want everything, now, as I said, as I start mounting this on the wall, I'll bend some of those cables a little bit. Try and make it as tight as possible. Try and have as many uh, or short runs as possible. Uh, and where I can use the least amount of, of wire to make it work. And before I move this table and do it, this was an extra piece. I know some of you will probably catch me on that. That's not going to be needed. That was just part of the uh, cables that I was working with. So I just had it laying there, clean that up. Okay, that's basically how it's going to look. And I'm going to start sticking it up on the wall right now. Now the wall behind it, I will say you do want to mount this on a good uh, mounting surface. That is half inch plywood behind there. So perfect to mount this in a permanent situation. So here we go. I'm also going to show you all the tools at the end of this project of every tool that was needed. It's not going to be very many. The main one just going to be the screw gun there. And I'm going to mount everything with these little screws here. I use them on everything. I just love them. They're called eight by three quarter inch or eight by three yeah three quarter inch screws really makes for a nice installation real fast and then just a couple of wrenches but i'll show you it's not going to take too many tools to get this project done okay it's taken me about 30 minutes to get to this point and i am sitting in front of a fan right now because it's a little warm in here but i'll just go over what i've done so far and as you'll notice it looks a little bit different than the way I laid it out on the uh, the tabletop before starting but all the same general principles apply I worked from the inverter backwards and the reason I don't have like this fuse running this way uh, because of the way I wanted to run the cables what I try to do is always lay it in a way that the cables will be able to fit with the protective covering over it. Now this particular covering for uh, the fuse, the openings for the cables are on the ends. So if I had it the other way, instead of horizontal, if I had that turned vertically, which you could do, I would have to cut, you know, a different opening in that case. And I try to avoid that. I try to just leave it the way that they were intended to be used. Uh, so I have nice protection over all of these connections. Uh, very important to keep that. And same thing on these bus bars. The way I laid them this way uh, in this configuration was so I can cover them. And with them, they have the cable slots at the horizontal position. So. I'm going to move that wire just for a second. So anyway, when it's all completed, I can cover that up as protection. Same thing on the red one, positive side. Got the only thing left to do now. These are the solar panel cables. I will run them through the wall out there. Put this pass-through cover on the outside and run them in. And they will connect to this solar panel isolator. Now this is just a short piece of wire, but I wanted to show you 
the way I like to uh, connect those is with those ferrules and I've got a ferrule crimping kit and this is an old piece that I've used but when I bring in the solar cables I will ferrule the connections they make a very nice clean connection for the uh, isolator and then on the bottom I will do the same thing and run them into the PV in on the MPPT solar charge controller and the ferrule connections I will use on the bottom as well so into the top from the solar panels down over and up into PV positive and negative now on this particular controller I haven't found a ferrule connection that works so I will just use uh, the strip the end of the wire and put it in there which works fine on this now on the larger charge controllers it fits a it fits a ferrule easy this particular model doesn't but it works just fine with the uh, the bare stranded copper clipped off about that much <laughs> and stick it up there and it cinches down nice and tight so and then from there coming off the uh, battery positive and negative the positive is going to go down to this breaker here I'm going to trim this wire a little shorter up to the positive bus bar this box represents where my battery will be so I know that this is going to be the edge of the battery I've got enough with this two foot two aug cable to go up to that breaker right there from there up to the bus bar and then off the negative end of the battery it's going to go into this uh, shunt battery monitor and it will connect on this lug here and then from which is labeled the B negative and then on the P negative that goes on up ties into the negative bus bar there so just about done the only tools that I have needed so far has been the screw gun uh, a few screws a number 14 and a number 11 wrench the 14 fits everything that I've off the uh, inverter off the fuses off the bus bars 14 wrench is all you needed needed the 11 on the uh, breakers to fit those to fit those and one other thing I'll say is I haven't cinched everything down tight I do everything just kind of finger tight to this point so as I put the final touches on it if I just need to make anything you know bend it a certain way because a lot of these wires I will clamp to the wall just for extra uh, security but at this point everything is just finger tight all I have to do now is go outside drill the hole in the wall out there bring the solar cables in connect up to the charge controller a couple little connections and that'll be it so very quick project very easy step by step I hope I've made it understandable some of this now is becoming uh, second nature to me that I've built several of these type of systems it doesn't look much different than this one but I just you know you can see like here I was able to run the the bus bars vertically for the amount of space I was working with and where I wanted the battery and stuff that just worked out better and you can see how I've got some of the cables bent to make it to where everything's going in and those covers will keep everything covered but on this one it's going to be underneath the table and you can see I made some lines up there on the wall that's going to be the bottom of the table so I know I've got everything below that line this thing is just about ready to be tied in and fired up it won't take me long to run those solar cables in and make a couple of shorter runs with wire off the charge controller up there so yeah three tools that's all it took. One other thing I'll just mention is this is, uh, these are 10 gauge uh, 
wires here that I use. It's perfect. I'm running 10 gauge on the solar cables. I'll run 10 gauge from here. I cut my own and, and put my own copper lugs on the end. And I may definitely cut and shorten a couple of these and make them fit just custom for this particular installation. So I think this is a good ending point for this video. I'm basically done. I'll go through, tighten everything up. The sun's beating very hard on that back wall, so I'm going to wait till later this afternoon, go out, drill the hole through the wall, run the cables in, snap a couple of hundred watts worth of power into this. And all of this is a segue into introducing you guys to a new battery. So in a couple days I'll be back. We're going to drop that new battery in there and fire this system up. All right, everybody. Hope you're getting an idea about how easy installing a solar system is. That's the whole point of uh, these past couple of videos and into the next one where we'll bring in the heart of the system, which is your battery storage. Beautiful day. Those solar panels are cooking today. Yeah, it's toasty. I got to get back in the shade. Aloha.